Hello, I'm Chai Hoffelenia. Welcome to Talk Thursday. Some politicians are making their intentions to run known this early, two years away from the 2016 elections. With us today is election strategist Senator Serge Osmeña, called the kingmaker for his skill in interpreting numbers and the pulse of the voters. He will be talking about trends and scenarios in the political landscape for the 2016 presidential elections. Good afternoon, Senator Good afternoon, Osmeña. Chai. Uh, we're Thank happy you that you me. could you could come and, and join us for this afternoon's and I'm happy discussion. To be here first time. Yes, um, I'd like to ask you first about the impact of the PDAF um, investigations. Just recently, Senator Gingona came out with the results of the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee. How has this impacted on the Senate as an institution? Uh, it's been a terrible blow to the reputation of the Senate. Uh, we're supposed to be an institution that is, like Caesar's wife, above suspicion. Of course, it's never been that way throughout history, but still, uh, the level of respect uh, has fallen by several degrees, several dozens of degrees. Uh, and. Uh, it can be held. Uh, it can even be felt among the senators where they feel that uh, they're under suspicion now, even if they did not do anything. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that uh, those of us who are left would be able to re recover and recapture the respect uh, that the institution used to enjoy from the electorate. How has it affected ties among uh, among senators? Like, I think people would say the Senate now has become a bedrock of discord. You have um, Miriam, Senator Miriam, um, at odds with Senator Enrile, and then um, Senator Gingona with um, Senator Estrada. Uh, ties are not are not the same. It's n it's no longer as collegial, perhaps. That's true, uh, but um, it hasn't really affected our production mm -hmm. of uh, laws. Uh, because the majority, about 15 to 18 of us, you know, do, we do attend sessions and we do conduct the hearings and we do engage in debates and we do pass the bills. As a matter of fact, recently uh, we just passed the Freedom of Information Act. So, um, yes, while there's a little bit more tension now uh, between some members, uh, the rest seem to be able to uh, keep up their production of uh, legislative work. Senator Estrada has, um, has claimed that what's, what's been going on, the investigation is really all linked to, to 2016 and that everything is politically motivated. He's been singled out. Um, Senator Bong Revilla has also been singled out because they have been, um, they have been reported as um, being interested in, to run in 2016. Do you agree that there seems to be uh, a bias in so far as investigations and targeting people are concerned? Uh, with all due respect uh, to the opinion of uh, Senator Jingoy, uh, I, I, I do not believe that that is the reason uh, for the current uh, filing of charges uh, against uh, the three senators. Now, of course, much would also have to depend on what follows next, no? Kasi meron naman ibang mga legislators na minention rin sa COA report. And if the ombudsman later on comes up with charges against those who, who were mentioned in that report, regardless of whether they're with the administration party or with the opposition, then the credibility of the ombudsman's office would certainly rise, and the argument of Senator Jingoy would uh, not hold water. Mm -hmm. Have you? Do you have any personal experience uh, in in so far as PDAF is concerned? Have you been approached? Were you approached in the past by anyone um, offering? percentages and, and commissions? Yes, yes. Um, when I first became senator, uh, I was being offered 40% uh, for books and uh, medicines. Uh, that's why I've never ordered a single book and a single <coughs> medicine in my 18 years as senator. Uh, and then, uh, right before the 2004 elections, three people came and offered five million pesos worth of fertilizer, which also uh, was supposed to throw me a 40% kickback. And uh, 
Of course, I turned them down. It was only after the 2004 elections when the Senate went into investigating the Jok Jok Bolante mm -hmm. fertilizer scam that I found out that, well, this was part of that big scheme where they had uh, about 700 million being offered to congressmen and senators at 5 million per. Uh, and, and that was how that so uh, kickback 40 operated. 40% of 5 million was supposed to go to 40% to the to individual senator or congressman, 20% to the salesman, to the one who brought the signed letter of request, 20% uh, to the people in the Department of Agriculture, which is Jok uh, Jok Bolante and, uh, and group, and only 20% for the fertilizer. So this has been going on for quite some time. The modus operandi, that was the first time I heard that for fertilizer. Yeah. Before that, it was, uh, before that, even after that, it, it was medicines and uh, books. I guess people would be curious if, um, if you had personal experience with this in 2004 and your colleagues had a similar experience, um, why, why wasn't this um, exposed earlier? Because you have no proof. Somebody walks into your office, talks to you alone, offers you this. You have no proof. He hasn't put anything in writing, etc. And secondly, normally the ones they would ask to approach you would be your friends. So you don't want your own friends to get into trouble. Right. First, I have no proof. There's no way I can prove that Chai walked to my office and offered me two million pesos. Mm -hmm. Chai will simply deny it. Uh, and second, I don't want Chai to get into trouble. So what I do is just nicely turn them down. And and say, please don't take up the topic with me again. Okay, now with uh, PDAF being taken away from, from lawmakers, do you think this will have any impact at all on um, the choice or election of, of our lawmakers, either in the House or in the Senate? Well, to those who used to cheat on their PDAF, because not all lawmakers cheat on their PDAF, to those who used to cheat on their PDAF, uh, they might have uh, less motivation to be running for re-election or getting their relatives to run for a Congress, although I understand uh, that certain um, study groups have uh, pointed out that the PDAF is now in, uh, it's being dispensed through five, five departments and has been included in the uh, future budgets, although now uh, there will be no more discretion on the lawmaker after the budget is approved. So now what they do is include it before the budget is approved so that when it passes through Congress, the project is already in the uh, national budget or, or the what is known as the General Appropriations Act. Mm -hmm. Now, um, I'm still checking into that and, and trying to verify it. Uh, but yes, there will be less uh, motivation for uh, some... Uh, legislators to run for election. As far as the Senate is concerned, there's less. Uh, PDAF does not play any important parts in our, in our lives because we do not, um, we do not, we are elected nationally. So uh, you don't need that much of a budget. You know, sometimes it's more expensive to run locally than it is nationally. A, uh, a very, very good, well-run campaign for for senator uh, can cost anywhere from as little as twenty five to 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 fifty million, and uh, a very expensive congressional campaign can reach one hundred million. So it all depends what kind of uh, uh, of an o opponent you have in your district, particularly in the big uh, important districts uh, which have cities that have big budgets. Siempre pagawain yung budget na yun, no? And I won't mention the cities, but uh, I think we all know uh, uh, where it would be expensive to run. Uh, so they'll have less money, and so there would be less of a motivation to run if, if, they're not, if, if they can't raise the kind of money they need to put up a credible fight. You've been um, quoted as, well, criticizing the Aquino administration recently. You, you said that uh, President Aquino is an awful manager. Full of awe. A W E. Why do you say that when you were quite instrumental in his 
winning um, in, yeah, well, uh, in the last election? Yeah, well, you know, elections? life is a dynamic thing, and uh, I've been tracking uh, the performance of his administration. They set their own targets, uh, or they adhere to certain international targets or treaties that well, we have signed. Uh, for example, uh, our Millennium Development Goals, that was signed about 15 years ago. Uh, we were supposed to uh, bring down our poverty uh, level to 16.5% by 2015. We're not going to make that. We're nowhere near that. We're at about 23% today. So we're Hope off. We're at 23%. We used to be at 33 We were supposed to half it. Mm -hmm. So halving it would, be, would mean 16.5% poverty uh, level by 2015. I think we'll only get to no no lower than 20, 21 percent by 2015. Today we're at about 23 percent, so uh, we haven't reached the target. Now, why don't we reach targets? It all depends. Sometimes it's impossible. You've got disasters, you've got Yolanda, you know, so that's understandable, no? Right. But when somebody's lazy and doesn't make the management uh, moves that are required, uh, to make sure that the targets are reached, then I find fault already with that. So I did support the president in 2010. I certainly did. Do I regret it? No. To me, looking back, he's still the best among the four candidates that were ma that made themselves available at that time. Uh, but I was hoping that he'd be able to really perform and make the hard management decisions, and he's not been making them. But his economic managers would say that the Philippine economy has, in fact, been performing quite. Uh, quite well compared to, um, to that its is correct. other neighbors in the region. What so they're saying is the rich are getting richer and the poor are getting poorer. Mm -hmm. And we don't want that to happen. So it's we not trickling sure down that enough. That, yeah, that's right. We want to make sure that jobs are created. And uh, hopefully as, as, as many jobs as we graduate students every year or as join the labor force every, every year. No? So I'm not even talking about college graduates. I'm talking about high school graduates. I'm not even talking about high school graduates alone. I'm talking about high school dropouts who join the labor force. And uh, we're, we're not making much headway then. Are you able to give this feedback to him? Are you, are you in no, touch? No. See, that's another thing wrong with his management style. He does not have a feedback mechanism. And it's not search as many. It, it should be the others. Like, I'm very disappointed that the... Uh, UP economists have come up with some really good studies of the agricultural sector and there's been no reaction. It's not even been disseminated. It should have been made a subject of the national debate since 2010. But Secretary Alcala, But those are very valid ideas. Those are very valid uh, concepts. Those are very creative uh, approaches. Those are paradigm shifts, which I happen to agree with, no? But still, anything like that, you've got to throw it out and bring it to the, to the level of public debate so that people will be able to examine it from uh, many angles. And it's not being done. So when you do that, you're stifling creativity in your own organization. So I talk about the Philippines as one managed, one company, Philippines Inc., You've got an organization, you've got to make sure that the organization stays alive and stays at the cutting edge. We're up against some pretty sophisticated competitors in this world, you know, and if you, even if you look at your own neighbors like Hong Kong and Singapore or even uh, less sophisticated ones um, like Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia, they're pretty sharp people over there. Their managers are pretty good. We've got to be able to match wits with them. You mentioned Yolanda and, and disasters, and I think uh, the recent events have shown that this was um, um, a showcase of managerial incompetence, perhaps. Uh, do you think, um, and, and the, the president's point person for, for, for Yolanda was, of course, Secretary Mar Rojas, uh, how would you assess his management and, and his performance there, especially since he is being eyed as a potential presidential candidate in 2016? Well, it's too early to talk about uh, Mars' chances for 2016. And I would rather leave it up to those who were close observers of what uh, he did or did not do in, uh, uh, in the aftermath of the Yolanda disaster, you know, which is uh, activities to rehabilitate areas, uh, first to rescue 
to uh, rehabilitate areas in Samar, Leyte, Northern Cebu, Northern Negros, and Iloilo, and other areas that were struck, with, uh, which includes Capiz, Aklan, uh, Mindoro, and uh, part of Palawan. I would rather let others uh, make the judgment, uh, and I and I don't want to make uh, any predictions for 2016 because it's way too early. But I think as early as now, two years before, um, I think political camps are already preparing, um, probably preparing for early surveys, um, yeah. and and people would would start thinking of who the candidates should be. They would be preparing, yes, but. Still, if you took a survey now, nothing would be definite. You will see that survey jumping around and changing every three months. So that shows you it would not be an exact science at this stage. But a year from today, it would be very accurate. Already. So when would you start taking your own surveys? Uh, probably next month or the month after. But oh, that's just to long. give me an indication. Yeah knowing that it's not going to be accurate but it will give me a general indication on who are the type of people that you can expect to make progress uh, if, if it can be called progress and who are the types of people you should even reject because uh, they're just way too low and um, would not have the the organization or the assistant uh, the professional assistance to move to move their candidacy forward would you hazard a guess? Because um, in the last in the last elections, corruption was a big issue. Would it continue to be uh, a major issue? You think in 2016, or will people be looking for improvement in in their lives and livelihood? Uh, um, no less poverty, perhaps. There would be a natural progression from the "kung walang korup, walang mahirap" uh, message of uh, the Noy Noy Aquino campaign in 2010 because the most important part of that message was the second part, walang mahirap. That's where people are affected. So they made the connection that if there's less corruption, more money will be spent for us. Now after six years, when they find out that their economic well-being has hardly improved, then that emasculates that argument. And they will say, maybe now we need a competent manager. Even if there's a little more corruption, I might be able to tolerate it that. Might if, change. I, if I, if yes, uh -huh. if, you know, th this is what um, I like to call it the uh, Clin Clinton syndrome. Mm -hmm. You remember when Bill Clinton first ran for the presidency in 1992? It was against an incumbent, George W. Uh, George Bush Senior. Yes. And George Bush had just come, uh, had just triumphed as uh, in the Iran Kuwaiti war, the Iraq Kuwaiti war, and uh, he was bragging about it yes. all throughout the campaign. And uh, but the economy was beginning to tank in the United States uh, because of the overspending done by the Reagan, the previous administration Reagan. It was beginning to show up uh, in the economic numbers in in, in America. And so Clinton came out with a tagline and, and that said, it's the economy, stupid. <laughs> and he won. <laughs> he won over a sitting president, which is very rare in American history. Yes, but I think the, um, the people around the president would also argue and say that if you look at the survey ratings of, of President Aquino, um, by this time, his ratings would have been much lower uh, if, you, if you compare it to previous presidents. But they haven't been as bad. Well, they might like Noi Noi personally, but it does not mean that it would translate into whoever he endorses for the presidency because if I were handling whoever that guy would be, I would, I would say you will now bring your uh, uh, debate to the area of competence in public service. You will now be able to promise the people I will promise you a better life, I'll promise you more jobs, I'll promise you better education for your children. As a result of the, of the PDAF scandal, some people say that, okay, we can write off Jingoy Estrada, we can write off Bong Revilla, um, and especially if you say that, okay, we're, we're, looking, we're looking for more competent leaders now. Um, is it, would it be too early to, to say that, that yes, these two are 
practically off now? Um, I'll say they were damaged. Whether they have been irretrievably damaged remains to be seen. So I'll, I'll, I'll wait for the surveys to come out. So you'll start your survey by June of this year or next year? I won't show it to anybody. <laughs> 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 but I'm curious though, who, who do you think would be new faces or who are the potential candidates besides the usual, the usual well, names that we've been seeing? You've got a marvelous candidate there in Grace Poe. Uh -huh. Of course, Bam Bamakino should also be considered, although uh, most people say that he's too young. But uh, he's a very bright fellow, and uh, you'll never know. Uh, he might be able to make up a lot of ground in two years. So let's see. Uh, then you've also got the Nationalist Party, which can come forth through the likes of Alan Peter Caetan or even his sister Pia. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's Chis Escudero, who's been, uh, who was uh, being considered for the presidency as early as 2009. Does he still have a chance? No, well, why not? He has heart now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, lots of heart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, it, again, it's too early to to tell. You'll you, you'll be surprised who won't be rating at all, and you'll be surprised who will be rating. Uh, and people have mentioned the Ping Lakson. Uh, so let's see. Again, I always go by the surveys. My ideas, my opinions are nothing. I'll always, I always stick by the surveys because that's scientifically done and um, they've always proven to be pretty accurate in the past. Giorgio <coughs> Binay has also um, expressed his interest in, in running for, for president. What do you think would be his vulnerable points? Well, the most <coughs> vulnerable points of any politician in this country is to be accused of corruption any politician, even in, the, in other countries, even in Russia, mm -hmm. even in China, now they're undertaking such a huge purge, the biggest purge ever in the history of, of China. They've arrested uh, uh, a former member of the Standing Committee of the Politburo, and that's only, that's an executive committee of nine, so he's one of the n nine most powerful men in China. And they've arrested him along with thousands of others because he had such uh, a widespread uh, uh, organization. Uh, he was head of the intelligence uh, bureau of the uh, Chinese government that he had a budget that was larger than defense uh, of uh, the defense department of China. He had a budget in excess of 100 billion dollars mm -hmm. a year. So um, corruption will always be uh, one of the biggest no-nos in, in, in politics. And, and, and I think that's great. I think that's great because it seems the whole world's coming together on that. Yeah. So you think that whoever will, will, uh, would be pref a preferred candidate in, in 2016 would more or less should carry on the narrative of, of the Aquino administration that it should yes. be clean? Uh, he he no should be able to say, I'm clean, but I can manage better. Uh, the management is And so is the, the debate now will start uh, concentrating or focusing on the management side, on the ability to deliver uh, what the people want delivered to them. Mar Rojas, of course, is being, has been um, named as a possible LP candidate. Um, do you think that would be a liability? A liability to whom? And so far as management is concerned? I don't know. It's up to the people, again, to judge that. You ask me how I judge he performed in the aftermath of Yolanda, in the aftermath of Zamboanga, the aftermath of the earthquake in Bohol. Because I wasn't there, it would not be fair for me to comment. So it would be up to the, those who were there to make their comments, to make their observations, and to, to see whether the entire country deems there. Uh, idea uh, their observations as valid or invalid. You mentioned Grace Poe. Uh, you helped in her senatorial um, candidacy the last time. Um, if you were to handle her, her campaign, uh, <laughs> how, would you, how would you handle it? I tell you something. I always survey these things first. 
And if they say that they like Grace Poe because she has red hair, what do you think I'm going to <laughs> tell her to say? <laughs> so um, it all depends on uh, how the people react to her. Everybody has his good points, has his bad points. Noi Nois happens to be happened to be honesty because of uh, yes. the reputation of his mother. Yeah. It, it 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 was bequeathed to him, and the people believed that he would not. Uh, besmirch the legacy that his mother uh, left him, mm -hmm. and that was what carried him to the presidency. So it was the honesty issue, and this time it'll, it'll be the management issue. And uh, I think that uh, the candidate can, that would be able to most convince the people that they're sincere in, mm -hmm. and have the ability to organize a government and a group of men who would serve as secretaries uh, to, devil, to deliver the goods in a timely fashion to the people of the Philippines, I think that's the one who's going to win the elections. A few days back, um, all of a sudden, there was, this, there was a story about Duterte, a movement asking Duterte to run for, for president. Uh, how realistic is that? Somebody who's known um, locally and then projected in the national in the national you know, scene. Well, those endorsements come from people who know of Digong, of Mayor Duterte. Yes. Uh, unfortunately, the, the liability or the disadvantage that Mayor Rudy Duterte has is he does not come from the center of media. He lives in Davao. So he is not projected to the people in the north, the Ilocos region, or to the people in Bicol, or to the people in the Visayan region. They know him in Mindanao, and they know him in Metro Manila. That's not good enough. So he has to be based in Manila in order to project himself and what he can do. So because the problem in Davao have been mostly law and order problems. Right. And this has been going on for 30, 40 years. I remember they had Nicaragua, mm -hmm. Nicaragua there. And um, he's been able to resolve it. So he's seen as a prob problem solver. He's seen as a good manager in that sense. Mm -hmm. And that's what people are looking for. A good manager, a problem solver, to help them solve their problems. Mm -hmm. That is why he seems to be an attractive candidate for the presidency. And I, I and I wish I I would like uh, him to come to Manila and uh, and uh, use this as his base so that then he'd be projected nationwide. But he said I don't want to be president. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it will take some convincing <laughs> to get uh, Mayor Duterte to come to Manila. But he would also need an appointment from the president. To well, it would be, be good here in Manila. Well, it would be recommended uh, if he could have a high-profile position that would give him access to media. What would be a good high-profile position? I will not mention <laughs> <laughs> anything because those occupying those positions may uh, get sore at me. Let me guess. <laughs> would it be the ILG? Well, uh, we know that he's always spent his time uh, with l uh, local government, so uh, that's his area of expertise. Mm -hmm. That would certainly be one of the uh, departments that uh, that he should be considered for. As a matter of fact, as early as 12, 15 years ago, he was already being considered for that department during the time of President Arab. Mm -hmm. What do you expect would be new things in, in 2016? Um, like people are concerned about forms of cheating, um, election expenses, how much candidates will be spending again. Uh, will this be the same problems that in the past presidential elections? Will they recur in 2016 or will there be something new? We cannot control candidate spending and I've always been, I haven't focused on election spending as uh, one of the negatives mm -hmm. of any campaign because I've always felt that spending by candidates is a form of a democratization of wealth. It's a redistribution of wealth. So whatever you stole, now you have to spend and give it to the people. <laughs> okay. So I'm happy with that. That's just my way of looking at things. Um, fortunately, as time goes by, the access that people have to the internet, uh, Facebook, 
media, etc., is getting wider and deeper and stronger. And when you have this happening, then everything becomes even more transparent. You can't even go around now and, 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 and be seen with somebody because everybody has a camera uh, which can take photos and which they can upload immediately. Yes, it's <laughs> and, and So you're in, in, in trouble. Yeah. So I love that. It makes uh, our society more transparent. And uh, the more uh, advanced we get in that particular field, uh, then the cleaner our elections would, would tend to be. So I'm, 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 I'm pretty hopeful there. Maybe just a last question, just to tie things up with, with the Senate again. Um, the Blue Ribbon Committee has submitted its report. What, what can we expect from the Senate? What's, what's there to, to look forward well, to? Well, there is uh, some proposal now for the Ethics Committee now to, to take a look uh, and see if uh, those senators involved should be suspended from the Senate. Mm -hmm. Now, we have no particular hard and fast rule on that. We can suspend them, there would certainly be grounds, but we've never done it before. So this is the first time? This would be the first time. So um, let's see how that goes. Now, Senate President Rilon also announced yesterday that if, and he's throwing the onus on the ombudsman, if the ombudsman says, or the Sandigan says, suspend familiar. those three, <laughs> so pinapapasing <laughs> <laughs> yung, yung uh, burden of uh, of uh, making that, that decision. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's wait until uh, the Senate reconvenes uh, on May 5 and uh, probably we'll go into caucus to, to determine what sort of action to take so on So senators that. are not immune from arrest? No, no, not at all. You, that, that particular clause uh, where you're immune from arrest came about because it prevents uh, the kidnapping of senators or congressmen from taking a vote on an important piece of legislation. So they say when you're going to and from the Senate, mm -hmm. and then they broaden it later while Senate is in, while Congress is in session. But when you're going to and from the Senate, you may not be stopped or arrested for any crime which involves a penalty of six years or less. Mm -hmm. So it's got to be an, uh, yeah. uh, a, a serious crime. Uh, that's how it is, but no, we're not we're not immune from arrest. <laughs> the moment the moment sessions uh, adjourns at six o'clock in the afternoon, you can arrest me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, this has been a very interesting discussion, Senator Osmeña. Uh, we wish we had a little more time, but uh, we've been talking to Senator Osmeña about the trends um, and electoral scenarios of, of 2016, and I'm sure there's a lot more to to look forward to. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm Chai Hofilenya. Thank you, Jack.